today's video is all about RV solar. We're going to show you the different types of solar panels that are available, plus the different types of charge controllers that go along with the panels so you can power your batteries off grid. This is a part of our RV solar series where we show you how to power your coach off grid. We've already talked about the different options available if you're going to upgrade your RV batteries, and we've talked about RV power inverters, which allow you to convert power from your battery to power things on your coach that make living in an RV comfortable, like your microwave, your TV, or your hairdryer. Coffee pot. Yeah. Today we're gonna to be talking about their solar panels. This kind of rounds out everything in your RV solar system because you can have an upgraded battery bank or you can have an inverter without actually needing solar panels. But if you wanna continuously receive power without needing to turn a generator on or to plug into shore power to recharge your batteries and continue to use an inverter, you're going to want solar panels. So we're gonna talk about the different options or considerations you need to think about when choosing solar panels so you can figure out which one is right for your rig. And we're also gonna talk about solar charge controllers, which needs to be purchased in conjunction with your solar panels to complete your off-grid setup. When it comes to choosing solar panels for your RV, you're gonna to wanna to consider three things, cell type, panel construction, and how do you wanna mount them. The cell type of an RV solar panel determines the cost, as well as the longevity or lifespan of the panel, and the charging efficiency. In the RV solar world, there are two main types of panels. There are other panel options, but they're not really used in the RV industry very often. You're primarily going to see monocrystalline and polycrystalline panels. Polycrystalline panels are going to be the cheapest option out of the two. They're less efficient overall in charging, so you get less wattage per square foot. They're also a little bit bigger than monocrystalline panels, although the size differentiation isn't that much of a distinction, and they don't last as long. If you're trying to get the most bang for your buck and get the most power out of your solar panels, monocrystalline is the way to go. Well, you're probably not gonna have to distinguish which panels are which on your own. If you're shopping online, it will tell you if it's monocrystalline or polycrystalline. It is helpful to be able to look at a panel and know which type of cell it is. A polycrystalline panel is going to be rectangular cells and it's going to be lighter in color than a monocrystalline panel, which is made up of individual cells and is typically darker in color. The next thing for you to consider is panel construction. There are two main types of panel construction. One is flexible and the other is rigid. The rigid forms of panel construction are probably what most people instantly think of when they think of a solar panel. It's the tempered glass top protecting the cells wrapped in a nice rigid aluminum frame. The other type is flexible panels. Flexible panels are normally chosen for RVs that are oddly shaped, like an R-Pod or a teardrop, where you don't have a huge surface to mount a rigid panel on top of the roof. You can use the flexible panels since they bend to fit an odd-shaped RV. They are also much thinner and much lighter than a rigid panel. So if you are tight on your cargo carrying capacity and you don't want to give up precious weight to your RV panels, you can definitely choose flexible as a really great option. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of each. With rigid construction, they're obviously way more durable since they have a, an aluminum frame and a tempered glass top. So they will survive a light hailstorm, you know, low hanging branches, things like that. You can also buy mounting kits that will allow you to tilt the panels away from your roof to get the maximum sun exposure on the panels depending on the time of day. They're also a bit cheaper than the newer flexible panels that are available. But one of the cons for rigid is you have to screw them into whatever you're mounting them to. That could be a bummer if you don't want to make any holes in your roof. Now let's compare that to flexible. Flexible panels do not have to be installed by drilling holes into your roof. There are ways to add space underneath the panel so that there you can breathe and they're installed without causing any damage or holes to your roof, which is a really big pro for a lot of people, but they also come with a lot of cons. You cannot tilt them. They're the most expensive option. They aren't as durable. They can break a little bit easier just because they have a thick plastic covering instead of tempered glass protecting the cells. And they don't technically last as long. A lot of people have complained about their cells breaking on their flexible panels, which doesn't happen as often as rigid. It's important to note as well that you can get monocrystalline or polycrystalline panels and rigid or flexible. So once you determine your cell type, then you can determine the construction type of the panel and you have options available for you. 
The last consideration you're going to want to think about before buying RV solar panels is where you want them mounted. You can have them fixed, which is permanently or semi-permanently installed on your roof, or you can buy a portable option. The difference between the two really comes down to your needs. We've talked about doing an energy audit in pretty much every solar video we've done in the solar series so far. So if you haven't done an energy audit, here's the chance. Go do an energy audit and figure out how much solar you actually need. Because most people who do a very large solar array will install the fixed panels on their roof because they can add hundreds of watts worth of solar panels on a large surface on their roof. Now people who typically opt for the portable solar panel route don't need a large solar array. Maybe they're just trickle charging their battery just so that they can keep it topped off. Or they use a portable solar panel in addition to fixed panels on the roof. There really is no right or wrong. It's just a matter of what your needs are, how much solar you actually want to install for your off-grid system, and if you want to be able to move the panels so that they can be in maximum sun exposure, or if you just want to stick with the panels on your roof and keep your RV in the sun. It's important to understand that solar is really just a means to keep your batteries charged up. Um, yes, you can have a big enough array on your roof to fully charge your batteries and then produce enough of a charge to keep your appliances running. But at the end of the day, it's just wasted power unless you have a big enough battery bank to complement the solar array that you have on the roof. So if you go with a thousand watts of panels on the roof and you only have two you know, six volt batteries installed, then you're gonna charge those batteries up really quickly, yes, but then the rest of it's just kind of wasted you know, wasted effort. Definitely do an energy audit. That way you can fully understand exactly what your energy consumption is and therefore you can scale your off-grid system accordingly to that. Also, your budget's gonna dictate a lot of the components, size and, and quality that you're gonna go with, but don't let that stop you because you can always add things or upgrade things later for our current RV, we decided to go with three 130 watt flexible monocrystalline solar panels from Ames Power. It's the same company that set us up with our solar charge controller, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, and our inverter. So we knew that the entire system would work together really well. And the reason we ended up going with flexible this go around was because we really wanted to save on weight. We have limited cargo carrying capacity in our Class C RV, so we really wanted to maximize the amount of sun that we could get and the power we could bring in through our solar panels without compromising weight. So we opted for flexible solar panels. It's really up to you which solar panel is going to make sense for your rig. Just make sure that the next component, which is your solar charge controller, is going to be compatible with your entire system. Let's talk about the second part of the solar system setup, which is going to be your solar charge controller. So the job of the solar charge controller is to basically be the gatekeeper between the panels and your batteries. It's going to evaluate the state of charge inside of the batteries and regulate the energy that the panels are bringing in from the sun on the roof. That way you don't overcharge your batteries and damage them. There's two main types of solar charge controllers, MPPT and PWM. If you really wanna dive in deep to the tech side of this, we do have a blog post which compares a lot more in depth about the difference between the two. But in summary, a PWM is going to be less efficient. You also have to have the voltage output of your solar panels match the voltage on your battery bank, which can be limiting. PWMs are often better for a small solar setup, and if you're going to be doing several panels on your roof, we definitely suggest going with an MPPT. MPPT is going to be more efficient overall and you can have different output wattages for your solar array compared to your battery bank. So it just gives you more options. You can also build a much larger solar array. So if you're going to be adding panels later on, MPPT is definitely the choice to go with. If you only go with price, you're going to think the PWM is the way to go because it is going to be significantly cheaper than an MPPT. But honestly, MPPT is going to be a much safer, more efficient way to charge your batteries and to protect your batteries from damage from your solar. We do have blog posts written on both of the topics today, choosing solar panels and choosing a solar charge controller. So if you're looking for more information or a summary of what we discussed today in the video, I definitely suggest clicking the show more section below and clicking on the links to, directly to the blog posts. If you're interested in getting the charge controller or the solar panels that we'll be putting on a roof, we also have a link for that down below. It's also important to understand when you're setting up an off-grid system, especially with solar, there's a thousand different ways 
to skin the same cat. So just because we're giving you this general overview doesn't mean this is exactly the way you need to do it. Take the information we're giving you and do your own research on top of it to determine exactly what sort of system is gonna be right for your budget and your coach. There's a lot more information that can be learned about solar charge controllers and how they work with solar panels. And there are a lot of videos out there that go into great depth about the charging efficiencies and what they actually do. So if you're interested in learning more, there are a lot of resources and we'll share some of our favorites on our blog, but this is a great starting point. And if you're just starting your journey on trying to decide what you want to buy for your solar setup, hopefully the information we shared here today will help you boil down your decision so you can get to installing your solar setup on your RV. We will have more coming out in our solar series shortly, so we hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you next week. Yeah, if you ever start your own YouTube channel or try to just record anything in general, every time you start your camera up, someone's going to start making some sort of obnoxious noise. Literally, they just started a wood chipper. Chipper. Now that the wood chipper is done. The chipper. Back to our scheduled program.